In Mitrion C, one of the important points is to preserve parallelism. The first difference between Mitrion C and Standard C is that rather than having an order of execution that follows from the ordering of lines of code in your program, the order of execution is only determined by the data dependencies of your program. So in the example, we have x equals to a plus b, y equals to c plus d, and z equals to x times y. In this example, the computation of x and the computation of y are independent. This means that they can be performed simultaneously, because there are no data dependencies between the computation of those two variables. However, z is dependent on the result of x and the result of the computation of y. So therefore, z has to be computed after x and y have been computed. In this way, it is possible to find all the operations that can be performed in parallel and all the operations that have to be done in sequence after each other. Through pipelining, it is actually possible to parallelize all these three operations, but more on that later. One of the main ways in which Matron C achieves parallelism is that it is an eager evaluation, non-strict execution programming language. This combination is traditionally quite rare. Usually, non-strict languages will be lazy evaluation languages. However, lazy evaluation uh, is a technique that actually limits parallelism quite a bit. Uh, eager evaluation is much better if you are looking for a parallel computing language. By non-strict execution, uh, I mean the ability to call a function without actually computing all the arguments to that function in advance. So in the example here we have a function called f with the parameters a, b and c. In a non-strict language the function f can be called even if not all the variables a, b and c have been computed. Uh, the only case uh, in which a variable needs to be computed is if it's needed for the computation of the function. So if we pretend that f contains a conditional statement uh, and depending on the result of that condition c will not be needed or it will be needed uh, then the function f can be fully executed without ever, execu uh, without ever having c computed if that condition evaluates to the right value. Non-strict execution can be a very powerful way of achieving parallelism, which is seen uh, in the example below. In this example, we have a function f taking two collections of data, a and b. Each one of these two collections has 100 values in them. With non-strict execution expanded to collections of data, the function f can start operating as soon as there are some data from A and B available. Uh, that is, the entire collection A and the entire collection B does not have to be available at the same time, as long as there are some values that F needs. Of course, it has to be the values that F needs first that have to be available first. The function F is returning two variables, X and Y. Uh, in this case, also collections. The result from f, x and y, can start to be produced even before f has, had, has examined all the values of a and b. So while f is computing on the inputs a and b, it can start producing the outputs x and y even before all of a and b have been consumed. This means that the function g that uses the input x and y that is, it uses the results of f, can start computing even before the function f has completed. So g can start computing on the first results from f, while f is still working its way through a and b. That means that f and g will operate simultaneously in pipeline fashion and produce the result z very quickly. This is a very strong source of parallelism in Mitran C. Another important feature of Mitran C is that it helps the programmer 
to reveal parallelism. The syntax in itself is designed to make design decisions regarding parallelism as salient as possible, to make it obvious to the programmer where different kinds of parallelism exists. So as an example, the loop syntax will reveal what kind of loop dependencies exist in your program. In Mitra C, there are two different loop constructs. There is a standard for loop, but there is also a different kind of loop called the for each. The for loop is a loop that requires a loop dependency to exist. That means that each iteration of the for loop has to depend on the result of the previous iteration. In this example, the for loop will sum the elements of a collection V. So for element E in collection V, do a summation where S uh, is incremented by the value of, of E. S is initialized by zero at the start. Um, for each iteration of that for loop, S needs to be updated with the previous iteration value of S. So in this way, each iteration is dependent on the result of the previous iteration, and there is a loop dependency. In the example on the right, we have a for each loop. Here, for, uh, the for each loop iterates across the two collections U and V. For each element E and F in the collections U and V, we will do the computation of multiplying the elements together. So we're doing a pairwise computation, a pairwise multiplication of the elements of the two collections. This operation has no loop dependencies. The computation of uh, the multiplication of elements 10 in the two collections has no dependency on the computation of elements 9 in the two collections. So the loop has no dependencies on the previous iterations and therefore all the computations can be performed in parallel. In Mitrion C, the two different loops are, have a syntactic requirement on the existence or non-existence of loop dependencies. So you cannot write a for loop unless there is a loop dependency in your algorithm. And you can't write a for each loop unless there is no loop dependency in your algorithm. In this way, the syntax actually reveals the parallelism to the programmer in itself. A final example of how Mitrion C helps the programmer in understanding the parallelism of their program is the type system. The type system in Mitrion C helps to control the kind of parallelism that you have. In the first example, we have what we call a list. A list will give you uh, pipeline execution. Data in a list can only be accessed one element at a time in the order that it exists in lists. It is very similar to the standard abstract data type single link list. The second example is a vector. A vector will give you unroll execution. That is, all the elements of the vector will be operated on simultaneously. And finally, we have uh, an example of a sequential uh, operation, in this case, a memory. Uh, the memory allows you to have random access uh, to the elements in contrast to the list, but it only gives you sequential execution. That is, only a single operation can be done on that memory at a time. The final slide is a picture of uh, the debugger and the compiler. The debugger is designed to help a programmer in debugging a massively parallel program. In a program where each operation operates simultaneously with every other line of code, traditional line-by-line -line debugging, such as GDB, is no longer viable. To help debugging in such a program, we developed a graphical debugger. The graphical debugger simply shows all the data dependencies and all the operations of your program. When you run the debugger, you will see data flow along the data dependencies and, uh, and be operated upon by the operators in the program. In this way, you will see all the executions that happen simultaneously, and you will both be able to determine the performance of the program and the correctness of the program.